Welcome back. Let's look at a new type of circuit. Actually, it's going to be a very similar circuit to stuff we've seen before, but this time we're going to combine two concepts we've already seen, that of resistors and capacitors. And this is going to be known as the RC circuit. So if we look at this circuit that we have, we can see that we have a voltage source, a resistor, and a capacitor. And we want to ask, what's going to, what's going to happen to this circuit? So let's assign the current to flow in this direction and let's start working out uh, through stuff that we know how to figure out such as uh, the Kirchhoff's loop rule. When this circuit starts we're going to see that the current is going to start flowing but when it hits this capacitor in here since there is no connection between it we're going to start getting some charge to build up in this on this plate. So we can uh, recall that the voltage drop across this resistor is given by Vr is equal to I times R, the current times the resistance. And we know that the voltage that builds up on a plate of a, uh, between the two plates of a capacitor is given by the charge on the plate divided by the capacitance. So let's start going clockwise around the loop. We'll pick a point to start with. And we'll see that we start at some point down over here, and the first thing we come across is this voltage source. So we add in our voltage. Next we move across and we see we have a voltage drop across this resistor. So we get minus the current times the resistance. And finally we're going to get a voltage drop across this capacitor. And that's going to have the form of minus the charge divided by the capacitance. And afterwards, we follow the loop back around, we end up back in the same spot we started at, and we know that because of the loop rule, we add to zero. Now if we remember that current is nothing more than the amount of charge that flows through an area in a certain amount of time. And this is again a little bit more of calculus, but it's just saying the amount of charge flowing over an area in a certain amount of time. We can rewrite the equation uh, this, this equation down here as V over R is dividing by the circuit by R is equal to the change of charge over the change of time, this is the current, plus 1 over this constant value of R times C. And this quantity is multiplied by the amount of charge. What we just gave ourselves is what we call a first order ordinary differential equation which is a little bit of complicated math, but it's just another type of mathematical equation. It's nothing to be too scared about. And we're going to go ahead and actually give you the solution to it. And the solution for this says that this equation up here holds if Q has the form V0 times C times the quantity 1 minus this exponential term. And it's e to the minus t divided by RC. So we get this little RC coming over here. We can see that we have this exponential value here that's got time in it. And we have some charge or some constant, the voltage times the capacitance out front. And this is what's going to happen to the charge as a function of time. And since we know that the charge is nothing more than the chain or the current is nothing more than the change of charge over the change of time, we can do a little bit more math. And we can see that the current as a function of time is given by the voltage over the resistance times the quantity e minus e to the minus t over rc so this term right over here it shows up again over here this is our exponential uh, term and it's not surprising that we see this in both cases where the current and the charge are going to be kind of uh, following similar patterns and if we start looking at this, we can start to see some nice uh, trends on this. For the charge, when time is equal to zero, this exponential value here, uh, e to the zero, goes to the quantity one. So we get one minus one, and we start off with no charge. And this is going to be the charge that, that we start building up on this plate. Similar, we're going to start with the current, and we'll see that the current starts at e to the zero, which is one. So we're going to start with a current of v over r. 
And this is exactly what it looks like when the capacitor is not there. However, as we'll see, when this value of t increases, this it multiplies by this constant, and the current will start to slowly, slowly uh, uh, decay away. So we're not going to get as much current flowing. However, the charge that we're building up is going to increase more and more and more. This value right here is going to get smaller. A better way to actually show this is to look at the plots for these things. So we're going to start, and we see that this equation for the charge, that the charge builds up. It starts at zero down here and builds up slowly, and eventually will start to level off as this value of t gets larger and larger and larger. Um, yeah, and you'll notice that we labeled this value 0.63 v over c, this constant times this value of 0.63, and that happens at this time uh, when time is equal to r c. And we'll talk about that in another video. However, if we switch over to the current, we can look and see what happens with the current, and we'll see that we start off at a value of v naught over r, as we said, this value v naught over r. And we start off with this part right here, e to the minus t over rc is equal to 0, or is equal to 1, because time is equal to 0. And we'll see that as it goes, it slowly decays away. So the charge starts and builds up until it reaches some value. And the voltage will start, or the, the charge, or the current, excuse me, the current will start and slowly decay away until it reaches a value of 0.